Hi everyone, uh, I'm Lance Eaton. I'm an instructor at North Shore Community College and this course, Popular Culture in the United States, is a recipient of the Course of Distinction Award uh, as part of Massachusetts Colleges Online. And so what I'm going to do is give you a brief tour of the course and kind of cover some of the highlights and things that I think are part of why it receive the award. Um, so first off, we're just on the landing, the announcements page. Um, I won't go through here, but I was pretty active and interactive on the announcements, regularly posting, not just, you know, what's due, but really kind of things that came up in the news, things that were relevant to the course, interesting uh, things that I encountered or encouraging students to share some of their experiences. Moving over, I just want to kind of give a quick show of how the assignments were structured. And so there were several weekly activities. Uh, I had this one-off assignment called the article analysis, and then they had a course project. And this was an iterative project so that each week they, or every two or three weeks, they had something due. And so they had two choices. One is what is popular culture? In this, course, in this assignment was really kind of having them delve into this idea of pop culture. What is it? How do we study it? How do we understand? it but to do so around things that interested them so they had options around what they could study and they do essentially little mini papers and then build it into a larger paper the course study uh, case study project was actually really cool so the last half of the course the last third of the course I have, we go into little case studies where we explore something, a specific area of popular culture. And so students occasionally will actually do this as a final project. They can choose to do this as a final project and choose a area that they want to explore and then actually be the ones that deliver that essentially create that module. Um, so it's really fun to see what they come up with and what they do. Uh, then a couple of these others, you know, weekly activities, students have the options of either annotating the learning guides, the, the learning guides that I create and adding to them, or blogging. And there's a series of posts and expectations around what those blog posts, uh, or what those things should look like. Uh, then of course we have the regular weekly discussions and every week we do a weekly reflection. So moving over to annotating the learning guides, um, it's something I have students or encourage students to do throughout all, all of my documents, whether it is assignment guidelines or, uh, <clears throat> or actual learning, gu learning guides, they all come up with this little statement on the right here that encourages them to annotate, to add comments, to interact and engage with the, with the materials. And so they do that throughout the semester. Um, as I mentioned, uh, they do a, they, are, they have the option of blogging. And so they, we actually have created a blog and it's been running for a couple of years now. Um, and you can actually see here, here's one of the prompts that I've put up. So the idea is for each module, there's a particular prompt they should be responding to. And so this one, I have them go to, uh, they find online comics because module 11 is, is the one we deal with about comics. And then they have to take a look at some of the previous videos that we've done around theoretical uh, approaches to popular culture and apply that to an actual comic that they read. So the idea is to identify the comic book that they've read, a uh, couple, couple sentences about you know, describing the content, and then actually apply a theoretical lens here. And I give them an example because I think that's always important as they're playing around with these new forms is to really kind of like go and, and see how or what the expectations is, so, or expectations are. And so I did another one uh, on Oscar So White and the like around uh, cultural hegemony. Uh, as I said, each week I have them do a weekly reflection, and in that weekly reflection, the idea is to, for them to just first identify what did they get to, what did they accomplish, and then what did they learn? And then finally, what questions or what challenges do they still have? Now, I mentioned the case study. This is just those guidelines, so I won't go too much into it just for a matter of time. Uh, but it's useful to know that they're there. Uh, and then, again, here's the guidelines for the What is Popular Culture Project. As you can see, I kind of create this table of contents to really walk them through. Because throughout each, there's different steps, there's options, there's areas where they have to identify what they're going to do and the like. Um, <clears throat> 
And then one thing I did this semester, and I'm still on the fence on how successful it was, is at the very beginning of the course, I actually put out a pitch to students. And I said, we can do this course in two different ways, and we can do it both. Um, one is the standard course, and that's the way that I've structured in a lot of the things that we've looked at. But I also pitched them, you know, we can actually you know, decide what it is we're going to learn and how it is we're going to learn it and do that in a, you know, kind of our own uh, exploratory manner so long as we work together on a structure. Now, um, I think the lesson I learned is that I needed to really think this through a bit more before doing it, right? This is something that is not too surprising. Uh, but I do have one student who's wrapping up doing actually a, a, a podcast series around popular culture. And so I'm excited for, for that final product. Uh, but definitely, it was a lear it was something I learned that in understand why it didn't go as well, or I only ended up with, ended up with one student um, in something I think in the future, I will, I will be able to do better with where I actually pitch to the students or the students have an idea of doing things um, that aren't necessarily, you know, the usual cycle of work or just kind of, or is really them being the knowledge creators rather than me. All right, so moving along. Um, so that was the, the what I called the DIY version of the course where the students would craft it together. But uh, if they didn't do that, then they opted for the, the standard or the traditional course. And, you know, I have this structured in a way of um, really kind of getting us to think about what is popular culture, looking at some major themes in popular culture, such as, you know, Westerns and cowboys or rags and rags to riches. Uh, looking at major issues in popular culture, race, race and ethnicity, gender and sexuality, um, and then really getting into the technology of pop culture and how that has influenced or changed our experiences around it. And then, as I said, towards the end, we do case studies. And the thing I like about this is, again, as I have students starting to create their own case studies, um, they now vote on which case studies to do and which ones we won't do. So there's kind of this growing collection of case studies that, that students can choose from and either learn from me or from other students. And then just within any given case study, we have the layout of kind of what, what to expect for that week. Uh, the learning guide, which as I said, they can annotate and add comments to, uh, just kind of straight listing of activities, any of the reading and the learning material, uh, how they can get to the discussion. And then the other thing is, is each week they often had an opportunity to select uh, what learning materials. So usually I would give five to 10 learning materials and they would choose you know, a, a handful rather than uh, just being assigned exactly what to read. And then the weekly reflection, an open forum for them to always kind of drop their ideas or thoughts that weren't necessarily related to the discussion. And then the discussions too, as I said, um, they were a little bit more dynamic. They're not as straightforward as, as people tend to think of them as. Um, and so in this case, you know, I had them, um, you know, they, they would do kind of weird zonky, I would say outside of the box things, but still got them to do a lot of the analysis that I was looking for. So in this case, you know, I have them as a comics evaluator, uh, really looking at some old comics from the 1940s and 50s and deciding if they adhered to the censorship code, the comics code of 1954, and if they did or didn't and how they respond to that. So that's the course in a nutshell. Um, it, it, I think it's a lot of fun. It's, it's always something that I think is a work in progress, but I hope this gives you some ideas. And if you want to learn more about it or um, borrow any of the materials that I've created, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, reach out to me. My, my name will be on the uh, the final uh, end slide of this. Thank you very much.